There are a great number of things that go into uh, choosing a season of six plays for our main stage. And there's only six plays, and there are thousands and thousands of plays out there uh, that have been written for 2,000 years in our culture. Uh, so it's quite a task. More important, I think, are the, uh, the uh, values, I suppose, the philosophy by which um, I choose or look at the plays. One of the basic ones is that the play, the script, the story, um, or how it's told, have a, um, a real connection, a real resonance to this particular community, to Buffalo itself. Um, because if it's not, if it doesn't, there's little point in putting it on because we are a theater that is about Western New York and about Buffalo and the Niagara region. We're not about anywhere else in the country. So plays that actually have uh, a real hook uh, or a real connection um, are important and, uh, and jump right to the front of one's mind when one's thinking of that. And of course, thinking of plays like Over the Tavern, that Tom Dudzik uh, wrote that I produced many years ago now, and the subsequent trilogy, um, City of Light, which we are doing next season, is another example of that. Um, as, uh, and, and any play that we can find that does do that uh, is important to us, and we're in this constantly in search of looking for those plays, of looking for Buffalo playwrights, of looking for Buffalo stories. It's very important to me that that chemistry happen between the actors, and it takes a lot of um, nurturing. Uh, it takes establishing the right atmosphere, I think, in the rehearsal hall, so that uh, the actors, uh, I always look at the actors when I'm directing a play, and certainly this is no exception, as creative artists. They're not, uh, they're not people who are told to move uh, specifically and say a line specifically. I expect and want them to bring uh, to the stage and to their performance their own interpretation of that character, how they see it, and essentially my, uh, my function as a director becomes more of an editor. Um, and I'll suggest things and edit what they come up with as we go along through the whole process. But establishing that atmosphere so that they all feel well looked after and valued um, as contributing members to the production we're embarked upon is vital. Gavin and I went through probably 12 different ground plans in dialogue, deciding exactly how everything needed to be set on the stage. At the same time, when I design, I generally look for a combination of some kind of basis in reality, in this case an Italian restaurant, and a metaphor that, that the audience doesn't necessarily consciously relate to, but is there. And in this case, I, I was going with two things. I was going with the context, which, which is the surround of posters, so that when the audience comes in, they look at it and they realize what kind of baggage they brought in with them to watch this play about Italian restaurateurs. The metaphor of the set is that this professor who's trying to get his play uh, done and financed is walking into what he perceives as some sort of a jungle in which he is the prey and there are these predators. So I, there are a lot of things in the set. The wallpaper has kind of a vine motif. The floor has a, a large floral motif. The colors are very primary so that that you get this sort of subliminal sense of a layer. And, and incorporated into that is all of the things that tell me about who this guy is. Thanks. Lou, who owns the restaurant. Uh, what his life is like, where he comes from, what his interests are. So that when the audience finally sees the characters, they have a, a sense that they really know who it is they're looking at. When I first get a script, I mean, I, you certainly read it a lot and go over all the, the, the individual parts that lighting is, is prominent in, uh, the setting of the, the play, the different settings, a park bench, a basement, uh, an apartment, uh, what time of day, what time of year, cold, hot, uh, you know, uh, everything means something in lighting. That starts my process of thinking of how I start setting up things. And then certainly have many meetings with the director and get his 
outlook on the play and his direction and where he wants to go with it. And he will answer a lot of those questions for me, like if, if it's uh, you know, just an apartment, but is it what time of day, what time of night? If it's not indicated in the play, in the script itself, the director usually has that outlook where he wants it to be or she wants it to be. And then after I get the initial outlook on the play, certainly then I meet with the scenic designers, um, the prop designers, the costume designers, the uh, special effects people, the sound, the sound engineers and sound designers. And we all think tank many, many, many times over and over. And then we change and we work and we change and we work. And that's usually a process long before they get into rehearsal. Instead of being a set, four walls on the stage, you've got to make them believe that that's a bar somewhere. And, and that's, that's, a, that's a task. With, and that's why it's such a collaboration to work with set and, and sound and, and uh, costumes to make that all look realistic. Sometimes in a lot of places you'll get original designs, but the final product doesn't look like you, you thought it was, where you designed it to be. But uh, with Breaking Legs, it looked exactly like the models and the drawings, and, and better. I mean. Uh, technically f fabulous. Uh, and again, the costumes too, you know, when I'm giving, way ahead of time, I'm giving colors and swatches and I'm told what colors and get, give a layout of all of it. When, you know, th that's what studio does. I mean, they, they take their details perfectly. So when those costumes on stage were exactly, when I open my, my tech book and my, my workbooks, I know that I picked the right colors to match that dress and that, that suit because their designers do it perfectly. When we had a very early meeting about concept, Gavin asked me, what, what did I want? And I said, I want body types. And he said, great, and went and got me body types, all different sizes and shapes, which automatically gives you a great texture on stage. One of the biggest leaps and hardest things for actors and for designers also to uh, deal with is the fact that when you're in a fitting room, you're very close. And when you get on stage, most of the people are quite far away, so you, use a lot, you lose a lot of detail in the clothing. You have to have things that are a little bit larger, not in size, but in scale. And on the one hand, you want to illustrate what's going on. On the other hand, you don't want to beat people over the head with, this is a comedy, so everybody's going to be in yellow. There are a few other types of, of plays that we do. One would be fantasy, where there's no base in reality, where it's completely made up. Those are very, very rare. Those, for the most part, would be built um, from designer sketches. They do the research or whatever, they make it all up. And we build it from scratch in our shop with our very talented staff. I have a very talented staff that I'm lucky to have. The other kind of play that we do are period shows where we have to do research as to what exactly was worn from the body out, including undergarments, which we have to construct for the individual actors. And in that case, for the most part, we make everything here. As I said before, we do have an extensive stock we have pulled from previous productions. We have a good working relationship with other theaters where we will exchange. We lend a lot and bar, um, rent to other theaters in the area. Uh, but those would be the the shows that are highly labor intensive for our our shop, but we make it all. The expression that I use is no review is a good review for me because if the audience because I feel if I stick out that I've not done my job. Um, I feel it's important that I create a mood or I create this extension of disbelief that that they're in the restaurant or that they're hearing like in this particular show, the VOM is the hallway to the dining room. So of course we have chefs, dining room ambience coming from the bottom of the VOM. So we want people to believe that, but we don't want it to be distracting either. So it actually gets very difficult. It's a fine line between, okay, it's there, or it gets distracting and we get people saying to house management, what is that noise down there? <laughs> so uh, it's kind of a fine line. But what I try to do is just make people believe that they're in this particular place. All the restaurant stuff, both the kitchen uh, that comes from the swinging doors and uh, the dining room comes from chefs. I actually went there and, and of course I benefit now from the fact that I used to have to lug this big old tape deck, this reel-to-reel -reel job, you know, and you, you get a hernia just trying to move all this junk to this little tiny thing and I just sat at the table, I had a nice meal and I just let it go and you know a little tiny um, MD recorder 
And uh, so one day I did the dining room ambiance, and the next day I went back and, and got the kitchen because a lot of times what you used to do is you'd have a two or three minute piece, which was a background piece, which was standard on sound effects records, things like that, which of course now they're CDs, you don't get the record skips and the glitches and the scratches and all that kind of junk. So it makes it much easier for me to do my job and make it real. When you think of the number of young people out there today who, because of the electronic media, and I have nothing against it, <laughs> but who really have never seen live performance and, and aren't motivated like uh, people were 50, 60, 100 years ago, um, to get those people excited about the possibility of live theater, either by trying it themselves or by getting that first chance to come and see it, it's, it's a big part of our mission. In a way, I, we're one of the best kept secrets, I think. Except, of course, for the uh, Studio Arena Theater School, which is really kind of the vanguard of our department and certainly represents the origins of the entire institution. I love student matinee performances because basically they're very unabashed in their response. You know, if they don't think it's funny, they don't laugh. But if they think it is funny or if they're moved by it in some way, you know about it. And there's no audience that can keep you on your toes more than a student audience that's really engaged in what they're watching. We've had a lot of shining moments, you know, in a way it would be hard to go back. Sometimes it's very mixed up with the play itself or who was here. I know that when we did Box Mile Box and Edward Albee um, world premiere, we had critics here from all over the world and every single New York critic was down here and that was an exciting night. There's really nothing like a live performance because it is different every time. The people who do it, do it over again, over again, it's different. The audience that attends makes it different every night. Their response, their reaction to it. And it's, it's alive, really alive. I've been encouraged and pleased to note that our audiences over the years are responding terrifically to uh, imaginative and theatrical work on our stage. Um, that they are recognizing that coming to the theater is a place where you actually do get to work with um, and interact with what's on stage and affect that um, and uh, have your imagination stimulated. So I, uh, and they're willing uh, more and more to go along for the ride and have a great time. About half of the theater's revenue actually comes from the box office of the theater. The other half of the revenue is contributed, it comes from a variety of sources, and the board of directors is uh, essentially responsible for generating or making sure that that revenue comes in. Um, much of that revenue comes from government sources, uh, much of it comes from foundations, uh, much of it comes from uh, simple uh, development, um, but the board is the uh, interface with the community and we have to be involved and are involved. Uh, in all of the uh, um, uh, contributed income that comes into the theater, including the, uh, the fundraising, the gala, uh, including the, the meetings with uh, uh, government funders, uh, including meetings with uh, foundations. The other, the other factor that goes into this is that to the extent that the theater is more dependent on its box office, uh, that begins to affect programming and we try to avoid that. Uh, box office program, when you're programming for your box office, um, your programming tends to become more conservative because you're trying to, you have an eye on the number of tickets that you've got to sell. Uh, and we want to keep um, as much of that uh, pressure off of our artistic director and off of the, uh, uh, the people who are thinking about programming as possible. From a nine to five point of view, we all kind of operate as a regular business, except that our product that we're producing is plays. And uh, that's what makes working in this organization and organizations like this so fascinating because uh, on one hand you're working in a business but on the other hand you're working in an art form so it's 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 the difference between those two and you know although our our goal is not to make money our goal is to provide a service to the community we have to operate in a financially um, uh, prudent and responsible manner because uh, if we don't do that then we're not going to be able to put on the plays that the artistic director and the artistic staff want to do. And we're not going to be able to do the educational programs that we think enrich the community. And we're not going to be able to do what we do as a not-for-profit theater company in, in this community. Ultimately, 
my job and the rest of my staff's job is to serve the artist. We want to give the artist the tools that they need, resources, finances, uh, facilities, uh, an audience, to do their best work. And when we do that and the art is able to flourish and really respond to what it wants to be, then we've done our job perfectly. And I think that's, that's the important part, is that we have to know why we're here, and why we're here is to support artists. There's no reason for us to be here if it wasn't for the artist. Takes a strong stomach. I hope your dad isn't scared off by it. Oh, I don't think so. It sounds like quite a play. It was a big hit last year in Buffalo. They do plays in Buffalo? Sure, they do a lot of plays in Buffalo. Where people actually get paid and stuff? Well, you don't get paid much. Huh, it's funny. You just never think about Buffalo as being a place where they do plays.